Hello, and welcome to the next video in my series on finite mathematics. Now a few points I always get out of the way before we start. Number one, if you're watching this video because you are struggling in a class right now, I want you to stay positive and keep your head up. If you're watching this, it means you've come pretty far in your schooling up to this point, and you may have just hit a temporary rough patch. And I know with the right amount of practice, perseverance, and hard work, you can get through it. I have faith in you, and so should you. Number two, please feel free to follow me here on YouTube and or on Twitter. That way, when I upload new videos, you will know about them. And on the topic of the videos, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That encourages me to keep making them. And on the flip side, if you think there's something I can do better, please leave a constructive comment below, and I will actually try to incorporate that into future videos. And finally, just keep in mind that the examples I work in this videos are geared towards individuals who are relatively new or are just reviewing the basic concepts in finite mathematics. So I will be going over each example quite slowly, and I will be explaining everything we do so you know what's going on and why it's going on. So all that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. So this is the next video in a series of videos on Markov chains. And I'm going to do a couple of videos in the future just on specific types of problems or specific examples that have some application to the real world. So this video is going to center on a problem that is common to almost every finite math book you're ever going to see in the Markov chain chapter. And that is a common problem called the gambler's ruin. And we're going to set up a, a sort of a gambling or betting process and model it in a simple Markov chain. Okay, So we can actually see how this game will progress into the future long term. So I'm going to assume a few things. I'm going to assume you know the basics of Markov chains. I'm not going to re-explain them in this video because I've done several videos before this one explaining what Markov chains are. I'm going to assume you know how to do some basic work with matrices. And we're not going to do any matrix operations in here, but uh, you at least know how need to know how to read them and things of that nature. So let's go ahead and look at the problem. Now, I do want to give credit for, uh, for this problem. I did adapt it from a, one of the number of finite math books I have. And you can see the authors and the year down there in the lower right. It's a really good book. If you're looking for a supplementary book, I highly recommend picking it up or maybe even looking to adopt the current versions. I really like it. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about our problem. So a re reluctant gambler is dragged to the riverboat casino by his more freewheeling friends. Now he's very conservative when it comes to gambling and things like that. So he only takes $50 to gamble with. And of course that means he leaves his wallet and debit card and credit cards and everything else locked in the trunk of the car so he can't be tempted to go get them. So he's only taking $50 into the casino to gamble with. Now since he doesn't know a whole lot about gambling, and I don't either, so don't ask, he decides to play roulette. And remember, that's the wheel that's spun with the little marble in it. It bounces around and then it lands on whatever number. And of course there are all kinds of bets you can place um, on the table. But he's going to do something pretty simple. Um, at each spin, he's going to place a $25 bet on red. That whatever number comes up is just simply red. Now, if that red occurs, he wins $25. But if black comes up, he loses his $25. Therefore, the odds of winning, or losing for that matter, are 50% or 50-50, kind of like a coin flip. Now, just keep in mind that the odds in casinos are not even. And kind of they have to be uneven because if the odds were even, the casino would never make any money. So the casino sets up games that are slanted in the casino's favor and the payouts are slanted in the casino's favor. That's how they make their money. If there is one field of study uh, that you need to know to understand how a casino works, Believe it or not, it's finite math. So so anyway, so this is the game he's going to play. Now he sets up some simple rules. 
He will quit playing when he either has zero money left, so he goes broke, which is fairly obvious, he can't play anymore, or is up $25. So if he has $75, he's going to quit. That's sort of the self-discipline of going into the casino. So under those two condi conditions, he will stop playing. So let's, let's model, model this process as a Markov chain and examine its long-run behavior or its long-term probabilities. So the first thing we'll do, we'll set up a transition diagram. Now in this problem, there are four states. So remember, he can, he's going to come into the casino with $50. So he could lose all the money and go down to zero, or he could win, go up to $75, and then he stops. And he calls it a night and just kind of hangs out and does whatever. So there are four states that could happen, because he's always betting $25, and the chances of winning or losing are 50%. So at the end, we have broke, game over. And on the right, we have up $25, I'm going to quit while I am ahead. So those are our two end points. Now if he's broke, he can't gamble anymore, so he's stuck in the state of broke. So the probability of being broke, once you're broke, is 100%, so 1. Now on the right hand side, if he stays true to his self-promise, once he wins his $75, the chances of him having $75 are 1, because he stopped playing. That, that money's in his pocket and it's always going to be there. So, those are sort of the end states in our transition. Now, at each step, if he actually has the money to make a bet, the chance of winning or losing is 0.5. So, if he has $25 and he makes a bet, the chance of winning and going to $50 is 0.5. Likewise, if he has $50 and he bets 25, the chances of going up to $75 are 0.5 because he has a 50% chance of winning. On the downside, if he has $50, bets $25, and loses that $25, now he's at the $25 state. And of course, if he has $25, bets it, then loses it, now he's down to zero. And then the game is over. So those are all the possible paths through our transition diagram with the associated probabilities. Again, it's very simple. It's not that complicated. There are only four states, and the probabilities of going between the states, except for the ends there, is 50-50. So let's go ahead and set up a matrix using this transition diagram. Now on the ends, we have what are called absorbing states. And the way to think about an absorbing state in this diagram, a transition diagram or a transition matrix, is that once you enter that state, there is no leaving it. It's kind of like a black hole. So once he is broke, he's always broke. Once he wins the $75, he quits. And therefore, he always had the $75. So he never leaves. Once he's in either state, he never leaves it again. So we set up a transition matrix. And it looks just like this. This is very similar to what we've been doing in the previous videos. On the left-hand side, we have the state we're coming from. And on the top, we have the state we're going to. So you can see the 1 there in the top left, that just means if he's broke now, he'll be broke next time. And on the lower right, that just means if he has $75, he will always have $75 because he stopped playing. And then the 0.5s just align with our transition diagram. So the probability of going from the $25 state to the broke state is 0.5. So that's the second row, first column. Now the chance of going from the $25 state to the $50 state is also 0.5. So that's the second row, third column uh, element. Then you go down to the 50. If he starts in the $50 state, he has a 50% chance or 0.5 of going down to 25. And he has a 50% chance, 0.5 probability of going up to 75. So that is the exact same information in the transition diagram just put in matrix form. And by now, you should know how to do that. It's actually pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and look at some long-run probabilities as we run this transition or this process many steps into the future. So this is what we expect in the next state. Now we take the transition matrix two steps into the future. So how do we interpret this? Let's look at something that's as new to this uh, matrix. 
So let's look at the second row, second column, that 0.25. So how do we interpret that? Well, that means if our gambler starts with $25 when he walks into the casino and plays this game, the probability of having the $25 still in his pocket two spins of the game from now is 0.25, or 25%. Now let's go down to the next row. That is if he walks into the casino with $50. That's state three. So let's go ahead and look at um, the third row, first column. So he walks into the casino with $50. The probability that he will be broke two rolls from now is 0.25. So think about how that would play out actually in the game. He walks into the casino with $50 and he places a bet and he loses. Well, that's the first step. So now he has $25. Then he places that $25 and then he loses again. So now he's broke. So the probability of that occurring is 0.25 or 25%. And that's how you would actually interpret that from the matrix. So let's go ahead and run this further. So this is what we would expect 10 spins into the game. So what would this, uh, how would we interpret this right here? Well, after 10 spins of the wheel, if he walks in with $25, the probability that he will be broke 10 spins from now is 0.666667, okay? Now if we go down to the next row, if he comes in with $50, the chance of him being broke after 10 spins is 0.3333333. Now you can see that those are actually fractions that we'll talk about here in a minute. So that's just the beginning where he starts and 10 spins of the wheel, we would expect him to either be um, broke or to have won $75. It just depends on what he starts with. And that's sort of the point of this problem. So let's go ahead and do it 25 spins into the future. Now look at our probabilities, and this should be fairly obvious what's happening here. So if he walks in with $25, that's state two, so our second row, the probability that he will be broke after 25 spins of the roulette wheel is 0.667. And as you can guess, that's two thirds. Now the probability that he has $75 after 25 spins, if he comes in with 25, is 0.333. And as you can see there, the probability of him having $25 or $50 after 25 spins is zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, look at the next row. If he comes in with $50, the chance of being broke, 25 spins of the wheel into the in the future, is 0.333, or one third. Now also, if he walks in with $50, the chance of having 75, 25 spins into the future is 0.667, or two thirds. So you can see how this matrix develops over time, over the long run. And that's what we're trying to figure out in this problem. So it would appear that our matrix looks like this. As, the, as we run the matrix into the future towards basically infinity, we have fractions in certain uh, states. So state two to state zero is two thirds. State two to state four is one third. State three to state zero is one third. State three to state four is two thirds. And of course, we still have our, absorb, our absorbing rows on the top and bottom. So what can we say about this, uh, this game? Now, the best thing we can do here is we can't really say that there is one specific answer to this gambling problem. All we can say is that whatever is in the first column is what it is. And then whatever is in the fourth column is just one minus that. And you should know by now that each row has to add up to one. 
So the best general form we can do for this problem is this long run or steady state matrix over here on the right. Whatever is in column one, that is X. So that means whatever is in column four has to be one minus X. Now let's look at two examples and or two starting points and then we're done. So let's say he walks in with $50 like he planned on doing. So remember our gambler started with $50, which is state three. He starts in state three. Therefore, we can set up an initial state vector that looks like this. Okay, so we put a one in state three, denoting that he is starting in state three, which is, in this case, $50. So now we can take that initial state and then multiply it by our transition matrix and then raise the transition matrix to some crazy exponent. So I did, I did 50 for this example. Now we know that after 25, it, it steadies out, but I just use 50 because I don't know, I like 50. So if we do this in our calculator, this is what we get. We get one third and two thirds. So what does that, what does that tell us? Therefore, if this gambler starts with $50, he has a one-third chance of going broke and a two-thirds chance of coming out ahead $25, meaning $75. And we did that just with a simple transition diagram, a transition matrix. We set up an initial state vector that says he starts in state three. That's what the one means. And then we did some simple multiplication. So you walk into the casino with $50 and do this exact game. You have a one-third chance of going broke and a, a two-thirds chance of coming out ahead. So that's actually those are actually pretty good odds, to tell you the truth, of coming out ahead. Now, let's say he comes in with $25 but does this same game. So our gambler starts with $25, he would begin in state two. Remember, $25 is state two. Therefore, we can set up an initial state vector that looks like this, zero, one, zero, zero. And again, the one means he is starting in state two. So we'll do the exact same process. We'll take our initial state vector, multiply that by our transition matrix raised to some crazy power, in this case, 50, and this is what we get. Now we have two thirds in the first spot and one third in the fourth spot. So when the gambler walks in with $25, now he has a two thirds chance of going bust and only a one third chance of coming out ahead $25. Okay, and this is, should kind of make intuitive sense. If he walks in with $50, okay, the chance of sort of bouncing around and, and bouncing up to $75 is greater because of where he started. Now, with the $25, it's kind of the opposite. Because he only starts with 25, the chance that he goes bust very quickly is, you know, is pretty high. So the only thing that changed here is what he started the game with, okay? But the transitions are the same. The odds are fixed in the game. The only thing we did was change what the gambler started with. Okay, so that wraps up our example of the gambler's ruin. And again, it's just a simple way to set up a Markov process or a Markov chain using simple probabilities, um, using an example that we can actually picture in our minds actually happening. So again, it's just a one of several examples I plan on doing to actually demonstrate these Markov chains sort of in a real world context so you can see actually how they work, you know, in your mind. So just a few reminders before we sign off. Number one, just remember if you're having problems in a class right now, I want you to stay positive. You're very smart and very talented. And if you're having problems, it's just temporary. With a little bit of hard work, patience, and practice, you can get through it. And again, I do have faith in you, and so should you. Number two, please follow me here on YouTube and or on Twitter. That way, when I upload new videos, you know about them. Also, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, because it does encourage me to keep going. 
or if you think I can do something better, please leave a constructive comment. So, all that being said, the most important thing is for me to wish you the best of luck in your studies, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.